Welcome to the Contrarians, and tonight we are live. We're back after two weeks. The topic tonight, their worst album, but killer covers. So think about it. We want to hear from you in the chat, so let's go. Holy crap, I feel like I'm in a time warp because it's feel, it feels like it's been such a long time since we've been back. Well, you were on an 80s cruise. so you I was, crazy. so I feel like I was in a time machine, but holy crap. that Guns of Roses have put out two albums since you've been gone and I know. already kicked out of the What band. am I going to do? What am I going to do? But we are back tonight and we are going to talk about more album covers. We're going to talk about their worst album but killer cover. Now, before we start this whole thing debacle off, this was very hard for me. I've been working on this and I just finished it up like an hour ago because all you go, see, if no one, if anybody knows about this, everybody gives their picks and I go last. Well, everybody chose everything. <laughs> and by the time I get to it, there's nothing left. So bear with me. I hope my picks are good. But anyway, I want to welcome the panel tonight, Todd Evans, Jamie Laszlo, Martin, and of course, Peter Kerr's here, and I want to thank everybody in the chat for coming. We are back, and we are ready to go. So, that being said, their worst album, but killer cover, and I'm just going to go as I see it. I'm going to go Todd Evans, Jamie Laszlo, Martin. Peter Kerr and myself, and we will just go around. So what do we decide? Three, three, wait a minute. Yep. Three, three, four. four. End. Yep. Three, three, and four. And each. Yep. And we want to hear from you in the chat. We will try to get to it. Martin will peruse the chat. We will do it like we always do. Yeah. I might be a little rusty, so bear with me. All right, Todd Evans, start us off. Okay, well, I wanted to start off by saying that, uh, you know, worst album – there are a lot of differing opinions on that. So we're going to go with, or at least I am going to go with uh, things that, you know, maybe people think they're the worst album. I don't know. And uh, so I'm going to start with one of my favorite bands, uh, Marillion. And some might say that maybe this is one of their weaker albums, Radiation. I've always thought that it sounded like it was uh, uh, maybe just a little bit undermixed. And in fact, they redid it in uh, 2013, Radiation 2013. And... Uh, but I think this cover is really cool. Uh, photograph shot by Carl Glover, and uh, it looks pretty much like what radiation would look like, maybe. And uh, so I went with that one. I think that's a great cover. I've always would they re-record the whole album or just do a they remix? remixed it? They remixed does it. it. Sound better? Yeah, it does. Okay. It, it just sounds a little bit. It sounds a little like bit like a more vapor trail kind of thing. Kinda, yeah. Well, yeah. vapor trails wasn't re you know recorded or anything vapor trails had bigger problems than radio it has a lot more bigger <laughs> digital distortion it's hard to fix that and its yeah. album cover even looks like this album cover right it does. yeah a little it does. Kinda. <laughs> yeah and for my next one speaking of rush some people would pick test breco is the uh the, the worst rush out. you know worst is relative it's like what's the worst pizza I mean, but, uh, you know, uh, but Chess Reco, a nice Hugh Syme cover with a cool photograph and another cool photograph on the back and uh, some pretty neat art on the uh, on the disc there. I can't show you the vinyl because it costs 11 billion dollars, but uh, on the disc, Todd, that's that dated fractal stuff. Remember when guys were using yes. fractal? Killing Joke did the same thing, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yep. <laughs> The only thing I did I ne I never liked about this cover was I never thought that this image behind the tray matched anything else. Yeah, but, it uh, looks like a uterus. I'm not sure what that is. But I'm not sure like what it is either. But anyway, number three is uh, you know, another again a band like Yes. Lots of choices for what might be their worst album. Um, I like this album, but it's you know it maybe is one of the one of the weaker ones. This is Union, and I think that's a really great. Uh, Roger Dean cover that was when kind of this kind of this and uh uh Anderson Bruford Wakeman Howe he was trying a new thing where he was he had like a border on the top and he was dropping the image 
like under it, almost as if the border's covering it up. Yeah, and, see, uh, I don't. I'm glad that. he. Did, I'm glad he didn't stick with that, but it's kind of cool. It's a little different. Yeah. Nice, nice. All right, all let's right. let's well, take a quick look over to the comments. Uh, yeah. First of all, we want to thank you all for coming. It has been a while. We were worried that numbers would be a little low, and they probably will be a little low. But yeah, tell your friends, let people know uh, that we are doing this uh, every Wednesday at seven o'clock Eastern. We've got Logan Collins here. We've got oh, oh Pete. Pete is look there. at that, Pete oh, Pardo. Go. For God's excellent, sakes, excellent. is yeah. making an appearance, ladies absolutely, and gentlemen. Absolutely, we've got Marlon. We've got Gary Joyce. Um, Ken White's here. Let's see. Any mentions here? We got Kiss Psycho Circus. It, a, a little early like this. We don't like to name too many because we think a bunch of these will be coming up. It's funny. Um, we've got Logan has mentioned yes, Union and the Ladder. I almost went with the Ladder actually. I was playing that. That's not not a great yes album, and it's a really killer album cover. Mm -hmm. that so, uh, all right, let's leave it at that for now, and let's uh move over to Jamie. All right, Jamie. All right, I already saw one of mine. Someone already mentioned it. That's all right. I'll add my little story. Hey, to I it. hey, yeah. when you start out with greatness, what am I gonna do? I know. I wish our viewers were a little dumber <laughs> so they wouldn't steal my shit. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, my first one I'm going with boys to call it Club Ninja. I always dug this album cover. It's probably their weakest, most hair hair metal-ish album. I mean, I don't hate it, but there are a few clunkers on here. Uh, I think uh, uh, White Flags, that cover of that song is one of my favorite BOC songs that I love, Dancing in the Ruins, but there are some clunkers. My favorite thing about it is I own this album. It's the first Blue Oyster Cult album I ever owned. This or Mirrors. It was pretty damn close. And it took me years to find the BOC little logo on it. I always looked for it on the ship. And my buddy one day smacked me and said, it is the ship. Kind of like how you couldn't find the F on Foreigner Agent Provocateur there, Grant. <laughs> I know. I could. I saw that F. First thing I saw at 14 years old. Oh, look, there's a big it F. It took me 40 <laughs> years to find that damn Foreigner thing. God, Jesus. And it's uh, nothing but an F. <laughs> and that's all He's it is, isn't it? Exactly. It's next two yeah. albums I like. But they're the least good from these bands. I'm going to go with Graveyard 6. Just came out. Maybe like eight oh, months ago. Oh no! Oh, uh -oh. not the white album. Here we go. <laughs> uh oh, that, ladies and gentlemen, that's called a uh, faux pas. A Grant's faux been pas. away too long. Yeah. <laughs> I've been away. Bill, Grant. <laughs> Seriously, I feel all rusty. Been grazing so. that cruise ship buffet. Holy oh, shit! Uh, and all the drinks on the yeah. damn boat. It was not, all none of his veins or arteries are working at this point. All right, so Jamie, that's not, that's not going to pop up. That's not going to pop up. So hold up your graphic hold up your oh, okay there i hope we that. get graphics in the future um, you will i'm not that i'm i'm a mess okay go ahead i, I like this cover it is a little dark here isn't it it's very classy mm -hmm. looking it's mysterious because the guy has no face um but it's probably their weakest album because it doesn't really rock that hard it's got a lot of ballads on it but i still like it um i did forget one though before i go into the next one Dream Theater. The yeah, you're gonna have to hold that up too. Off oh, fungal. <laughs> Those are the only two that I screwed up. I don't own it. <laughs> oh. So let All me right, do it. Todd's show. got it. Todd has All it. Right. Todd, Todd, as he's going rescue. to get it, I think it's a very cool, futuristic looking album cover, but the album is very long. I've listened to it once in my life. Yeah, there you go. Thank there you. you. Go. Coming <laughs> through. See, somebody's not rusty. Um and it, it looks cool. I listened to it once. It's very long to get through. Kind of samey. Kind of boring. Any Dream Theater fan will tell you it's the worst one. So I'll, I will never listen to it again just the one time. But it looks cool. Yeah, I'll trust you on that. All right. All right. Cool. All right. Uh, is, that, is that three? That was three. That was three. Okay. We've got AB has mentioned the Gene Simmons 1978 album, but uh, I thought Peter Chris was the worst album out of those. Um, yeah. Let's see what else we got here. Um, we've got Club Ninja has really grown on me over the years. Says Ken White. Um, all right. So let's uh, move on to my picks. My first right. one is Nazareth uh, 2XS. Great. Hold on. That? Hold on, Martin. You're going okay. too fast. All right. Good God, man. All right. <laughs> I, I, I can I can do this. Okay. Okay, right, so, you. you know, Nazareth, I don't think anybody's going to uh, list any of the 70s albums. And, and then when when uh, 
you know, they got heavy near the end. Uh, the, the last bunch with Dan were really cool. But uh, in this 80s period, there are, I could have gone with this. I could have gone with Sound Alexa as well, uh, which has a really good cover. But this is a good, violent looking, uh, heavy looking Nazareth album cover. And it's not a heavy album at all. Uh, Fool Circle doesn't look particularly heavy, but it's actually kind of a cool co cover too. But this, this we really thought was going to be cool. It's got a little bit of a deep purple vibe to it, I guess. Uh, deep purple burn vibe, right? Uh, to it, uh, kind of a kind of a cool cover. Uh, and my second one is Rainbow Stranger in Us All. Um, I've got my my framed up thing here where you've got it there. This is my frame thing that's got every single lead singer uh, autographed on that. So we got a wow. down to earth. We got a Joe Lynn Turner. We got Ronnie on the, on the record in the back. And then we've got this. So stranger in us all. Um, a lot of people don't like that album cover. I think it's a really cool album cover. I like that whole Richie as scarecrow look. I, I like that the font is back. I think it looks really almost black metal. Um, so I think it's a good cover and I would say it's not their greatest album. Um, and you know, you get, you almost get a double, you know, the, the, uh, the debut album as well. Um, I rate it quite low in the rainbow catalog. A lot of people love it, but obviously it's a great cover with the, uh, with the guitar castle. So that's cool. So you could have gone either way on that one, but I think most people would go with uh, stranger in us all the, the tidy, uh, you know, late period, uh, kind of paint paint by numbers rainbow album as, as the worst. And for my third choice, I'm going to go with um, Budgie. If I were Britannia, I'd wave the rules. How do you like that title? Um, and that is probably the best rendition of the Budgies. I mean, ah, we got a Roger Dean. We got two Roger Dean earlier, actually. We got a really uh, super early days Roger Dean on Squawk, but then we got a traditional one on uh, Never Turn Your Back on a Friend. Uh, Bandolier is a great cover as well, but this is a really cool cover. Um, and it looks like it's going to be, you know, another heavy budgie album. And I was quite disappointed as a kid getting this in 76 after having Bandolier, which is quite rocking. Uh, this is not very rocking at all uh, besides Sky High Percentage and Black Velvet Stallion, I guess. But yeah, amazing, amazing album cover there. Uh, before we go to Peter, let's see what else we've got over here. Uh, Ken White says Nazareth had killer covers in the 70s, though. It's true. And they even had some some yeah good ones later on as well. ZZ, ZZ Top Afterburner, Car in Space, says Logan Collins. Um, I don't know. If, yeah, it's that's close to their worst album, I would say. And it is a, like it is a great cover. You need to uh, respond yeah. to uh, Pete, though, because he says he Pete's not into that record. Martin, bad album, bad cover on that Nazareth. Oh, so he doesn't like the 2XS, eh? No. Uh, I, 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 I quite fancied that I uh, saw the Deep Purple Burn comparison. That just hit me for the first time. I actually, but Pete, I got to tell you, when, when we first saw that cover, we thought it was going to be a heavy, heavy Nazareth album. So that was yeah. kind of the point there. Uh, but yeah, the, the whole two XS thing, I, we didn't cotton on how to, how to say that. Oh, two, two times S what, what is this kind of thing? Right. Um, so yeah, anyway, the title was definitely kind of confusing, but, uh, all right. Over to Australia yeah. with, with Peter. Okay. So yeah. I'm going to talk about the Rolling Stones, but I'm not going to go to dirty work, which I think we've flogged to death. Um, I'm going to pick another album that some may say is their worst. And I'm talking about the <laughs> satanic majesties <laughs> request so i've got that reflector art which is really nice yeah. it's a great album cover it's a bit of a sort of a thing on sergeant peppers a bit of a response i probably only like two songs on the whole album she's a rainbow and 2000 man but the rest of it is just just a psych overload oh. it's a bit mindless and they're sort what of trying to figure it the out album undercover under that the that's that album, whatever that is, undercover. That that album, I think, is the worst. Come on, Peter. I, I You're actually out of line undercover. on this one. I'm contrarian. I love undercover. I think that's oh right up God, there. Help, so God yeah. Help but it, anyway. it also doesn't have a killer cover. Undercover. No. <laughs> All this, uh, right. the ones with the stickers you can take off, that's not too bad. I think Pretty that's neat, quite man. quite interesting. But anyway. All right. All right. Okay. Um the next one is an absolute stinker, and this is The Clash Cut the Crap. Oh, shit. Sorry. You're jumping <laughs> all over for me. Sorry. All right. So this is basically a collection of um, inebriated footy songs done on an electro beat. Mick Jones, I don't know what you were thinking. There's only one decent song, um, This Is England, but the rest of it 
it really does taint the legacy of The Clash. But I've always liked the uh, a cover art. It's got that street sort of art, you know. It looks like a poster that's done on some corrugated iron. Um, it's kind of interesting. But as an album, um, it's too much in the electro, not enough punk, not enough attitude, and no decent songs. So that's The Clash, Cut the Crap. And Peter, uh, I think so you met Joe Strummer there. Mick had left. He'd gone on to Oh, sorry, Joe Strummer. Yeah. yeah. John, yeah, I know. Yeah. The band looks great on the back too. What a great band shot, eh? I mean, they, mm. they it's look a great, like, this looks great like it's going to be an amazing punk album, right? And, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, whatever. Okay, all right. Thank what's you. next? What's um, next Peter, uh, the Beatles. Oh my Yellow god, submarine. I can't even imagine you mentioning this, but go ahead. <laughs> oh well, you know, the Beatles are just sort of five you know, sort of a high caliber band, but they've got to have a worst album. And I mean, I've always liked this cover. It's sort of like the psychedelic, the cartoon and the cartoons absolutely brilliant, the movie, but this Beatles album, if you're going to pick the rank, the lowest out of uh, such a high grade uh, catalog, this would be it. And it's simply because it's only got six Beatles songs and the rest of it is uh, George Martin and um, scoring for the soundtrack. So, but I, it's a great album, but it's just not as good as the others. Well, you know, it is a soundtrack. So, you know, you have to give it that. All right. All right very cool. Let's see. Uh, cool. Oh, right. Peter's mentioned Ted Nugent Intensities and 10 Cities. More on Ted in a minute. Uh, but yeah, that's actually a great choice as well. That, that, that is, is a really cool cover and, uh, and a, a brutal uh, brutal live album of all new originals. Kind of a neat concept, but we were all very, uh, very disappointed in that. <clears throat> uh, Norman Richardson mentions Ace Frehley's cover of 2000 Man is much better than the original. He's referring, of course, to your Satanic Majesties album there. Um, we've got Demolition, bad cover and bad album, and Pete, uh, Pete agrees. Uh, let's see. Uh, Satanic Majesties is great. Is a great psycho. Yeah, I, I actually like Satanic Majesties. I think it's a fun. great record. I think it's good. Like Bridges it. Bridges to Babylon is by far the Stones' worst record. Says Andrew. Yeah, those later ones. That's a whole show debate. You know what? Yeah, how like do you rate those later ones? Right. Um, Nostradamus. All right, over to Grant. All right, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Let me uh, pop up my list. Okay, uh, before we started. Todd Evans and I kind of briefly talked about this because I was scrambling to try to regain my consciousness. I'm going with men at work because the fact is by the time I put my list together, all this stuff had been picked. <laughs> but if anybody knows men at work though, you know, Peter Kerr, he may love this record because he's from down under, but this album is absolutely hideous. It doesn't even sound like Men at Work anymore. How can they go from Cargo to this record and totally change their whole sound? It's not Men at Work to me. But the cover doesn't bother me. It's very artsy. But if you look at it, is this a Men at Work album cover? I don't know. No. It looks very uh, yeah, label, it's artsy. label it's designed. Good. Yes, yes, it yeah. sounds like the label designed it. But it's a nice cover. It's artsy. I'll give it, it that. Is. All right. My next pick. I'm going to go with George Harrison, Gone Tropico, uh, 1982. This is considered probably his worst record that he ever produced. But the album cover, I, you know, it does seem kind of tropic-like. I, I, I don't have a problem with the cover. It's okay. It's very 80s. If you're looking for George Harrison, this might not be the one you want to pick. Looks kind of like your Men at Work cover, too. Kinda. Well, kind of. Well, we have a theme going here. We have a theme there. Look at that. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> if you rotate it, yeah. Yeah. All right. So this is probably my third one. Is probably considered the worst Beach Boys album on the planet. But the cover's okay, I mm. guess. The Beach Boys Summer in Paradise, nineteen ninety two. Absolutely hideous. This is considered the worst Beach Boys album. But you know the whale's nice. I mean, they're trying to be environmental and all that. I, it's just a waste of time. Don't even go there. It's just a hideous record. But a little uh, Roger Dini almost. Kind of Roger Dini, but you know it's a pleasant looking cover. I mean, who doesn't like to look at whales? For God's sakes. So anyway, that's my third. Nice. I'm scraping the bottom of the barrel, boys. Scraping the bottom. Ah, you can always okay. pay first, Grant. You won't. Yeah, that's the strategy, Grant. You got to get in early. I can't. It's just too much. I can't. 
do everything. So yeah, yeah there yeah. you go. All right. Let's see. We've got uh, Joseph Francis Burton has mentioned uh, King Crimson Lizard. Love, love, love the cover, but the music. Er, and oh, uh, let's see. ACDC for those about to rock. Says Michael Easter. I saw Pete here somewhere. Yeah, Molly Hatch at the Deed is done. Awesome artwork. Music is meh. Uh, business as usual was a classic as well. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Such exciting titles like Jailbreak and My Love is Like a Tire and Iron, Iron Didn't Impress. Uh, question mark says Logan Collins referring to Intensities in 10 Cities, of course. Um, all right. Over to uh, Todd. All right. Okay. So this uh, little segment has a, a Neil Morse theme. It's usually difficult to get me to shut up about Neil Morse. And so right. we noticed know that. Tonight is no exception, but I'm going to start with Spock's beard. And, you know, there's going to be varying opinions on this, but I personally think that the Oblivion Particle is uh, their uh, their worst album. Uh, one of the out of all the Ted Leonard uh, sung albums, I think it's probably the weakest. Um, pretty cool. The back is pretty cool, too. Kind of a crazy man in his lab doing something but kind of steampunky. Uh, all of the all three of these I'm going to talk about are uh, designed by uh, Thomas Ewerhard, who does a lot of the uh, art uh, for these guys, and uh, they're all pretty good, I think. So we move on to Neil Morris. I've talked about this album in an album that's, that looks like its title, but this is uh, Neil Morris' Lifeline. I think that's a really cool image of a guy reaching for the rope there. He's grabbing a lifeline. Pretty, uh, pretty epic image. Great photograph. And uh, then this one might be controversial. Let me just say that I love this album. And uh, it, it actually, to me, is not the worst album by Transatlantic, but a lot of the consensus is that it is. Kaleidoscope from 2014. Uh, great art on this. Uh, there it is in large form and great photograph on the inside that matches. And, and uh, the bonus record is pretty cool, too. But... Uh, you know, you got to, for some, some fans, you, you have to pick a, a worst. And even though it hurts to say it, that's probably it. Nice. <laughs> nice theming. All Very right. cool. Excellent. Very nice. All right. Over to Jamie. All right. My next one is a band that I really like. Somewhat newer. And, you know, again, it's not a bad album. I actually like it a lot. But it is their least good album. And that's Absolution by Chemist. Kind of a... <laughs> Stoner, yeah. doom, not stoner, just a doomy traditional metal band and gotta love the cover. And as it, it's their first album, so they were still getting their chops, I think, you know, where they wanted it to be. Uh, and it started a trend with their album covers, you know, with with wizards and warriors and all kinds of stuff. And I always appreciate that when a band does that, kind of like the Iron Maiden type thing. And after that, I'm going with Nostradamus by Judas Priest. Easily their worst album. Very long to get through. It's two CDs, too, isn't it? Jeez, man, that, that's a lot of music. But the cover, when I first saw it, I was like, oh, you know, concept album, Priest, double album. I'm, I'm all for it. Looks really cool. Like an evil Nostradamus. Uh, I'd listen to it maybe twice three times and i own two of these too because i think at the time when you bought it you got like a discount or a free lawn ticket to ozfest or something like that so i bought two to get two tickets i don't know i don't think that album's all that bad but that's just me that's a lot of it though um next <laughs> i'm going with it probably is but to confirm I, it is just you don't forget i do <laughs> like you know that damn kiss album it has like I was, a couple songs that are all right on it I was starting to get fatigued just listening to you talk about it. <laughs> so so you never invisible it? shield. <laughs> Vision. Visions is a good song. That's about it. Uh, next, Dio, Master of the Moon. Really cool cover. Good it's cover. It's a slog to get through, though. All very mid-paced, samey. It's slow Dio, as Martin likes to say. And it's not very good slow Dio. I like the, the, the title track, Master of the Moon. Other than that... Okay, uh, very right? cool. Okay, so my first pick or sixth pick or whatever we're at now, uh, first of my new trio is Alice Cooper. Uh, easy action. Uh, you know, some people might call this their worst album. They might go with uh, Pretties for You. 
Um, you know, remember the group ends fairly soon. So then we're into the solo ones. So you could say those don't even count. Um, so we are talking about the group here. Uh, I think this is an awesome cover. They look absolutely like rockers there. This looks yeah. like such a cool, I love the old sixties font. Uh, yeah. The red looks cool. They look like rockers on the back as well. Uh, so yeah, great cover, but it's one of the, you know, the infamous, uh, Zappa years of the, you know, the, the two albums that are, that are kind of weird. Um, so this is a contentious one. Uh, Led Zeppelin presence. Um, I love this whole, uh, the object thing to death, uh, on the back. It's even cooler with that and the whole concept behind it. Uh, I won't go into it. You know, Aubrey Powell is explained the whole thing to me. It's in my Zeppelin book. Um, but, uh, yeah, I just think it's a really cool cover and, you know, here's a whole debate. I mean, is it their worst album? People will pick this. They will pick in through the outdoor. I would probably even pick the debut over this. Um, uh, some people will even pick Zeppelin three. So uh, they're all over the board kind of with Zeppelin, but yeah, you do hear this one. And I think it's, it's probably the number one coolest hypnosis concept uh, that they ever did. Um, and my next choice is Ted Nugent spirit of the wild. Um little bit politically incorrect now you can't you can't wear an indian headdress like that anymore um we've seen some pop stars get heck for that but ted won't get heck for that and he means well um you know he's the it's fred bears on this right and that whole that whole situation you know that's kind of the centerpiece song in here i never liked that song um i think it's kind of just the music on it is really dull but i i think this album is kind of dull i i was quite disappointed with that and but everything is telling you it's going to be a kick-ass ted nugent album he's got the font there and he always looks great live on these covers uh but yeah i i think it's a bit of a stinker as people would say um so there we go let's see what else we've got in the comments over here coda is a big ug says ken white presence great pick Thank you. Uh, Master of the Moon, lame cover two leagues behind the devil, you know. I think it's a pretty cool cover. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely, the whole, that slow, slow deal thing, I was never big. Straub's burning for you. Interesting. Yes. That looks like a heavy metal cover, right? Um, that goes with our Nazareth 2XS and Deep Purple Burn. Uh, ACDC, blow up your video, except that that's a terrible cover too, right? Yeah, uh, horrible. Kind of the problem, but it is not a great album. What's everybody think of the cover of Iron Maiden Virtual uh, 11? No, not a great cover and obviously not a great Maiden album. Tigers of Pantang, The Cage. I actually like that. That's a guilty pleasure. There's a whole nother show we can do, but I that does have a cool cover, uh, although it's kind of green. Um, but um, yeah, I guess it's a contentious album. So uh, over to Peter. All right. Okay, so we're going to go to 1995 with uh, Fleetwood Mac and the Time album. So this has got no Stevie Nicks, no Lindsay Buckingham. Um, Christy McVie is the one that really sort of leads off um, most of the songs on this album. It's got a bit of a country feel to it, but in the catalogue, it's way near the bottom. I don't mind the album cover. It's kind of very delicate. You've got that little sort of egg and it's just um, opening it up. Um, I think it's a very effective album cover, but in respect to the music, the music is not Fleetwood Mac at their finest. So I put this right near the bottom, Fleetwood Mac time. Um, the next one I'm going to do is probably my pick for David Bowie's worst album, and that is Tonight. So always like the cover, it's sort of got that cathedral, very bright 80s look, and you've, you've got... Um, Bowie looking like the blue alien. Um, save a couple of songs. This has got some of David Bowie's worst songs ever. I mean, somebody should have arrested him for covering God Only Knows. I think um, Brian Wilson probably put a writ um, out on David Bowie. What do you think you're doing? Mm -hmm. It's got half-baked reggae songs. I mean, like with um, sort of cover songs. They're leftovers from Iggy Pop. This is really his lowest point. But I don't mind loving the Alien. That's a song that seems to have grown. And um, yeah, Blue Jeans. That's not too bad. But that's sort of aged a little bit. Um, it's way too much padding. But tonight, that's easily David Bowie's worst album. And the first one I ever bought too. Good point. I do well, love Blue Jeans. Not, yeah, not Blue Jeans a great pop song. I'll give you that. Yeah. Um, finish up the trio with Uriah Heep and Conquest. Such a heroic album, but the music is so anonymous. There's no spark. <laughs> it's 
John Sloman, lead vocals, and um, look, this is heap at probably their lowest nadir. Thank God that the new wave of British heavy metal and they got Pete Golby in the band and they got the little bit of spark, but just the songs are completely anonymous. You you play it and you couldn't hum a, a riff or a lead break in any of the songs. <laughs> but the album cover's great. Conquest. Good yeah. cover. You're right. Yeah, I was going to go with that one too. And of course we know that goes with Sabotage Fight for the Rock too. They did the same thing, right? In our, in our and job. Van Halen did a promo, I think, of that. Exactly the same thing. Okay. Cool, cool. All right, over to Grant. All right, here we go. All right, my number uh, four is Boston Life, Hope. Wait, Life, Love, and Hope from 2013. Davy Gallagher and I looked at this album back, gosh, eight months ago, thinking this was like the most horrible Boston album on the planet. I will admit, I don't like the Life, Love, and Hope font, but you know, if you get beyond that, you've got the spaceship. It's a great cover to some degree this wasn't boston at their finest but this record was absolutely hideous and i wouldn't recommend it to anyone so if you're a boston fan just run away uh number five i'm gonna go with the who magic bus and the reason i'm choosing choosing this is because deca in the states put this together kind of to fill that gap in between sellout and tommy it's not like the music is bad or anything. There's a lot of singles and B sides on it. It's not like that, but do we really need this record? No, but the cover is killer. I love that sixties font. It's totally misleading because there's nothing on here about it, them being on tour, but I do dig the cover. I like the bus. I like the photograph. I think it's a great cover. It's just, did we need this record now it's probably forgotten after all these years but it's a good yeah. album cover it's very swinging london isn't it's it it's cool and hip it's cool yeah. and hip. so yeah. uh you know it is what it is all right my number six i'm gonna go with steve miller band circle of love after the great records well some people may debate this but you know you fly like an eagle and Dreams, those are big records, for God's sakes. Now, some of the purists from back in the day will go, oh, my God, that's not Steve Miller. But, hey, those records sold a lot. Now we get to Circle of Love in 1981. We've had a, a big span of time. And I don't know if Steve knows what to do. It kind of sounds like, uh, you know, Fly Like an Eagle, but it's not. It's kind of a crappy record for to be got to be honest but the cover is kind of cool we've got steve doing whatever steve's doing i don't know what he's doing but i i, I like the cover okay i just don't think the record is a, a very good record and if you look at the re reviews from back in the day it didn't get that great it's just kind of mediocre yeah. does he have worse albums possibly but this was a big drop in quality so there you go there's my next three nice nice just take another look at the comments we've got logan collins says blue jean good there's another cup there yeah gary joyce says i like blue jean as well um let's see we got neighborhood threat smokes yeah it's kind of true gary uh that is a pretty cool tune uh muddy waters electric mud new orleans uh sorry new orders republic worst album nice cover says rodrigo alves i like tusk says logan collins Fleetwood Muck was done after uh, rumors. Fleetwood um, Muck. Let's see. Many meatloaf albums. Um, yeah, let's see. I'd take presents over the first four, to be honest, says Logan Collins. All right, over to Todd for your final four. All right. All right so with this next one, Grant and I have kind of – Grant has a beef with me on this one. So oh, this – so I picked uh, Living Things from oh, Matthew Sweet no. oh, as, no. you know – it's one of his worst albums, but I think oh this, my god! I think okay. this cover is great. I think it's really nice. I like the the back of it where the song titles have a little honeycomb where the number is. I just think it's. I just think the theme of it is just fantastic. I mean, you could. These are the other two that come up as his worst albums, but I don't think the covers are as good. So that's why I picked the Living Things. Okay, but def, definitely not his best. Uh, best period yeah, yeah. um speaking of uh new order republic new order republic uh man regret the first song on this album is one of the best songs it's what it's like in a top 20 of all songs for me and the rest of it just goes downhill from there 
But man, this cover uh, designed by uh, Peter Seville is just great. And it's got all of these photographs of like all these different photographs of all, you know, almost like kind of Americana kind of things. It's mm -hmm. just really excellent, I think. But uh, what does it mean, a, Todd? Not a very good record. I don't think it means anything. I really don't. <laughs> but, uh, but I mean, but I like, like they're I, having I, fun. I think it's cool. Um, and then this one, I will say that a lot of people will call this this guy's worst album. I do not agree. I think he has quite a few that are worse than this one, but this usually gets panned. Elvis Costello and the Tractions, Goodbye Cruel World. I think it has a great cover. There, it's, it's actually a great the, album. It's actually the band there. But uh, yeah, I, I don't, I think so too, Peter, but a lot of people, mm. I, I read a lot of people opinions that say that they they don't like this one uh, yeah i don't but, uh, I, need, I like it i like trust a lot trust is a cool I, do I don't have any problems with I this record at it kind of gets panned by having some very uh 1984 sounding sounds on it but uh that doesn't bother me as you guys probably already know and then my last one is uh asia astra um some people think of this as the worst one i think that the the, the John Payne era is worse than this, but if you're talking about the original era, uh, you know, for the first three albums, this is probably the weakest. But I the cover's great, very I think it's better um, than Alpha. Yeah, very. very uh, oh, I, I I love Alpha, but that's an I'm weird. Um, but uh, <laughs> but very unusual cover for Roger Dean, but I think it really works. It's really it's nice. It's a great cover. Don't I see think. very many purple album covers either. Nice, nice. Okay, let's see. We've got uh, Vote for Maiden, No Prayer for the Dying, not their worst album, but the original cover is great. We've got Yes, Heaven and Earth, Black Sabbath Forbidden. They're coming in really good here, says Amadeo. Uh, Europe, Prisoners in Paradise, says uh, Danilo. Uh, let's see, kind of cool blue. And then we're back up to the blue jean and whatnot. So uh, Pink Floyd Amagama is mentioned here, says Normand. Um, all right, over to Jamie for the all last right. four. Okay, I'm going to go with Queensryche. Q2K. You know, they were doing a lot of crap around this time. Is this their worst? <laughs> I don't know if it's their worst, but I'll tell you why it's my most disappointing. Because um, the cover is kind of cool, though. You know, it's like, here comes the emblem. It's going in or it's coming out or something. Here's the thing. First of all, you're dating yourself with Q2K, calling it that. I knew right away. Nobody knows what Y2K is anymore. Nobody cares. So you dated yourself right from the get go. But uh, now in the here frontier or here in the now frontier or whatever came out before that, and that one sucked. When this one came out and I bought it and it sucked, I said, uh oh, I think they just suck now. This was like a nail in the coffin. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> so that's why I knew what I, I knew the next one was going to suck. <laughs> um, the next one I'm going with Baroness, Yellow and Green. This is kind of a, another newish band, kind of like a uh, Mastodon. And the CD comes with this slip cover that's shiny and really cool. And the lead singer, oh shit, what's his name? Something Bailey. Forget. Uh, he does all the artwork on all their albums, and they're all similar. And they name the albums after the color on the albums. So it's very cool. And when you, you know, open it up and he does the whole thing. But it's their most bloated album. It's a double album. It should have just been either yellow or green, not yellow and green. It should have been condensed into one album. Monster Magnet. Love this album cover. Four Way Diablo. Uh, I'd wear that on a shirt any day. But um, is it their worst? It's up there with uh, their last album. You know, I hate when bands try too hard. In, in, their last album was called Mindfucker. It's just like a bunch of old guys trying to be like edgy. I hate that. Um, but that album's kind of growing on me, and this one is not. It's one of their worst albums, but man, that cover is badass. It looks like a Motorhead cover to me. Yes, they have a bull, um, as you can see right there, logo guy, uh, what do you call it, mascot. Mm -hmm. And he's very, uh, what's the name of the Motorhead guy? Does he have a name? Patagno? You mean the designer guy? Patagno? No, no they're the mascot. The, the mascot. Oh, Snaggletooth. Snaggletooth. Yes, that's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Monster Magnet, it's it's almost like uh 
I think they might even be slightly worse when they weren't trying hard enough on the first couple of albums, right? They're so stoned right. on those albums, right? And I, I like, I like, I like them in the middle, middle man. Spot with the, yeah, power trip, man. I like them in the again. middle stone, not yeah, too yeah. stone, but then yeah, when yeah. they were edgy but still kind of slick in production. Yeah, yeah. I loved it when they married all that together. And as someone mentioned, Psycho Circus is a Kiss's worst album. I think even their 80s albums that are considered bad have some fun moments. Other than the title track on this one, it's not very fun at all. But I remember back then, albums came out on a Tuesday. And I remember going into the record store late on a Monday evening. And they were just unpacking this. And I said, oh, can I see that? And they said, you can touch it, but you can't buy it until tomorrow. And I saw the cover and how the curtains moved. I was like, oh, my God, this is going to be great. I was there the next morning. I was like, after playing it, maybe I got to play it again. <laughs> maybe I got to play it. No, this stinks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And just think how Ace and uh, Peter thought of, felt about this. Yeah. They even feel worse than you. Yeah. Yeah. And he played on one track. Yeah. All right, was that four? Yeah, yes. that four. Okay, all, all right. right. My next one is uh, I'm going to go with Grateful Dead, Oxamoxa. Um, you know, I I don't have a lot of patience for the very early Grateful Dead. I'm I'm a I'm a Donna and Keith era kind of guy, and even the even the last albums, uh, I'm I'm into. Um, but yeah, this whole that that's obviously one of the uh, you know the the great legendary poster artist type covers. Mm -hmm. And you know, I I pulled this out just also Anthems of the Sun, same kind of thing, great cover. Yeah. Uh, little Inagata Davida vibe, I, I, I suppose, on that. But yeah, that one's amazing. And yeah, I just don't have the patience for that stuff. Um, Angel White Hot has been featured on the show before. Um, but, uh, you know, I think most people would pick probably in the beginning, if you're a deep Angel fan and even know that exists, you would call that their worst album. But uh, this is certainly a candidate as is Sinful. Those those are pretty much the, you know, thankfully you you would never say that about their two reunion albums. Uh, they're actually really good. And then, of course, the early stuff is great. But yeah, this is uh, this uh, looks a lot heavier and cooler. And it's definitely not a white hot album at all. Um, and then we've got Testament Souls of Black, the famous uh, let's uh, we got to put an album together quickly uh, to get in Clash of the Titans. Um, but uh, yeah, it's not really that bad. It's just kind of got this narrative attached to it. Um, but yeah, pretty, pretty cool album cover, heavy metal album cover. Frankly, I don't I don't really think it's that great album cover. But um, and then my last one, I don't I, I it turns out I don't own a copy of this anymore. Uh, Metallica St. Anger. Um, which uh, people generally will call their worst album. And uh, depending if you include Lulu, I suppose. Um, but yeah, great album cover. I can't remember this guy's name, but this guy was the famous artist that did the, the Obama poster, right? It was done in the same sort of yeah. idea and same color. So it's great. Great cover. Uh, yeah. It was all, it was all like, you know, was it textured paper? I mean, it was, it was basically matte anyways. It was a nice digipack booklet and stuff. It was just a good design. All it the It kind of looks pop art. You know, yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, let's just take a quick look. So that was my four. Let's see if anybody's uh, got anything else to mention. Oh, here in crap, the there's a lot here. of comments. A lot of comments. Turn that angel upside. Okay, we got to do the logo. Oh yeah, I guess it's tradition, right? Turn that upside down. Yeah, okay. do it there's time. there's the angel cover, right? There we go. And then you turn it upside down, and it still says angel. The greatest oh. rock and roll band logo of all ever, time. hands down. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, Dope's Divinity, my favorite monster magnet says Rod Rodrigo, uh, yeah, and then oh, yeah. The Psycho Circus, Into the Void, yeah, that was one of the better songs that suppose on it as well. Uh, all right, over to yeah. Australia for the last, uh, four there, and then Grant. Okay, yeah, just, uh, maybe a couple of controversial ones. Uh, The Police, high quality, high caliber discography, <laughs> synchronicity. Um, if you get past the hits... I don't really like the deep cuts. I don't think they're as strong. And you're starting to get a lot of Sting's new wave crap, which I don't, uh, the new age stuff that he was doing in his solo albums. So a bit controversial. I've always liked the album cover, but you can see they're not as a unit. They're all very separate. They've all got their own little storyline in the three strip comic strips. And yeah, anyway, that's, that's my pick, Synchronicity. Okay. Um, next one, The Cars, Heartbreak City. 
So always love the album cover, but in the discography, I've ranked it down because it's just way overproduced. It's more like the Mutt Lang show. Um, again, if you get past the singles, a lot of it is not as strong as the early Cars discography. And um, a lot of the sounds are very dated. It doesn't sound really fresh in 2024, but I've always liked the album cover. And it's one of those album covers that you've got to peel off because it tells a whole story. Mm -hmm. All right, Lou Reed, Metal Machine Music. <laughs> this is the most badass Lou Reed cover of all time, and he's saying, fuck you, I'm going to make a noise album, and you record company fogies, just take it. So there you go, Metal Machine Music. Um, it's only an album that your dog, your po pooch would love, but definitely not dinner party music and... Uh, it's a whole, it's a whole sob genre cult that love that album. So, Peter, are you saying that you actually own that? Yes, I do. Oh my! And I goodness, actually paid money gentlemen. to see him perform it at the Sydney Opera House. He actually he performed, performed the whole it? album at the Sydney Opera House, and I can tell you, folks, within an hour, there was only uh, twenty percent of the audience left. Wow! <laughs> How could Did you enjoy it? it? Oh, you get used to it. It's kind of a tonal. You get used to it. Um, and you were sober? 100% sober? Yeah, I was. Absolutely. Absolutely. But um, a lot of people went to this show thinking that they were going to get uh, Sweet Jane and, you know, um, Walk on the Wild Side. But, no, he was just playing his um, music. I've got another story. Peter Gabriel. I saw him at the Radio City Music Hall. He brings on Lou Reed and he goes, and hey, we've got special guest star Lou Reed. He got booed. The whole Radio City Music Hall, I've never seen it. All these Genesis fans and all these Peter Gabriel fans were booing Lou Reed. Now, that was worth the price of the admission. I've never seen that. Wow, they were absolutely crazy. hostile. <laughs> that's as crazy. crazy. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I think this fits the, the category. Worst oh, album. Well, oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> Hands Best down. Hands cover. down it fits. There you go. Yeah. yeah. I'm not taking shit from anyone. <laughs> and Lou Lou is a Lou Reed album with Metallica in the back. Yeah. Okay. I never considered him. Mm, so anyway. Good. So good. All right. Let's finish with a very sober choice, and that's Motorhead, Kiss of Death. It's so not one of their best albums, but um, they were starting to plateau out. I don't think they've made a terrible album, but it was definitely in the lower rungs. They were just sort of making the same album again and again and again. But... Look, I like their album covers. You can't really say it's a dud. So Kiss of Death, the old Snaggletooth, and, yeah, that's my right, fault. Now, wait one minute. Let's flash back to Monster Magnet. <laughs> I don't know, ladies and gentlemen, but they seem very similar to me. Yeah, maybe yeah. I'm just a monkey, but maybe yeah. I see a lot of similarities. Very cool. Yeah. So there you go. Cool. Um, All right, Grant, over to you. Okay, here we go. Oh, boy, we're getting down to it. This is where I was really having trouble picking stuff. But if you're an Oasis fan, you'll understand why I picked this. This is a great record. I was doing some research today, and, you know, you think that maybe this was like a, a photo that was, like, brought together digitally. No, no, no. They had a crane. They actually took that Rolls Royce and they put it in the swimming pool. All this was staged. So I'm looking at it going, well, that's kind of cool. Too bad. They didn't, they worked, they worked on the album way more. They worked on the album cover way more than they worked on the album. Cause I don't think it's an all that great Oasis album, but the cover, they really put a lot of thought into it. So uh, I'll give you that. Nice. Um, and then I'm going to go with the very last Velvet Underground album from 1973. By this point, the Velvet Underground, Velvet Underground were in shambles. There's speaking of Lou Reed, for God's sakes, he's not on this. Who is it? Is it, uh, what was the guitar player? I think he's the only one left. I don't think, I think everything, everybody else was farmed in from some. No Mo Tucker, nobody. I don't think so. Kyle, I think no, Sterling no. Morrison, I think is the only one left. Yeah. But I, I, I think the album cover, well, it's okay. I mean, I'm scraping the bottom of the barrel, but this is a horrible record. The album cover is way better than the record. Hmm. And now, we know Jamie's already mentioned Kiss, but no one has mentioned any of the members of Kiss individually. So I'm going to go with Peter Chris out of control. Now, we all know, ladies and gentlemen, that 
Peter Chris's records aren't all that hot, but well, this record's not hot either, but I kind of like the cover. We've got the DJ exploding and shrapnels flying through the crowd. And I don't know. I kind of like the record. I've always liked that cover. Yeah. Yeah. I like the cover, but I don't, you know, the record's probably not all that hot. You know, I'm just saying some people may differ. You may like I it. I probably could have went with the album. No, Grant, nobody likes it. Don't worry. No one likes it. Okay. <laughs> well, there you go. But I do kind of dig the cover, so it's kind of cool. Does anybody like any Peter Chris solo record ever? No. Okay. Well, nope, Martin, look, like, see how Martin jumped right in? Uh, no. <laughs> no. So, But Young Logan in the chat, he may like it because Young Logan likes a lot of stuff. All right, so my last one. There's a lot of, Okay. This is considered probably the worst Ramones album. Now, I don't have a problem with this record. They had Graham Goldman produce it. Um, but Pleasant Dreams, I think, so, I, th- I like the album cover. It's kind of artsy. It's kind of cool. Does it scream Ramones? It's not them lined up against the brick wall or anything. But I kind of like the cover. They're trying a little bit. But, you know, after end, end of the century, this is kind of a letdown. And yeah, it's not not good top tier. Yeah. No, it's literally not. my favorite Ramones album. Oh, for God's sake! Well, well, there you go. Well, you I are a contrarian, damn it! So there you well, go. Hey, to be fair, fair. yeah, exactly. Yes. Go ahead, go to ahead, Mark. Fair, Why do you know, like every it? Ramones album? Is you know you could find things to like about all of them if you kind of like the concept around them. Like they they're operating in a tight range, um, but it's like, are you buying into the concept at, at that time? But I mean, for the general, the reviewers didn't think much of this record. So I'm putting it in that. I like the cover. And, uh, you know, that's my uh, that's my number 10. Very cool. Well, I think we should wrap it up because we have some more uh, shows to do. Uh, we have we, more you know, shows. These, these gentlemen on this show, they have things to do, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. So we're going to wrap this up. I want to thank the panel, Todd Evans, Jamie Laszlo, Peter Kern, of course, Martin and myself. We love it. If you'd like to be on these panels, you could be on one of these panels, for God's sakes. We also have a Patreon. Please check that out. A lot of great content there. We're always posting stuff daily on the Patreon. We also have a Kofi. We like a buy us a pint, buy us a cup of coffee. We like that. We also like donations. And damn it, we didn't get one donation on this episode for crying out loud. That's because it's, you had to go on your cruise and we had to lose our momentum. I know we did lose our I momentum. We lost a lot hopefully of people, but I th- hopefully we'll regain what we lost. But anyway, I do want to thank everybody in the chat. Thanks for chiming in because we couldn't do it without you. It's all about trying to turn you on to music. And we do want to hear from you. We want to hear what you like and what you don't like. So that being said, thank you, young Logan. Thank you for that. That's very nice of you. But anyway, I want to wish everyone a good night. These gentlemen have to go. Uh Fun show, Grant, for God's sakes. That's right, John. I'm on a rant. I'm on a tirade. Anyway, next week, I do not know what the topic is. We'll figure it out. We we'll will we'll work it out. out. We'll work it out. We'll work it out. But tune back here next week, 7 p.m. Eastern. We'll figure out by Monday time. or by Wednesday morning. We'll, we'll figure, figure it out. out. We will see you next week. So good night, All everybody. Right, thanks, and guys. gentlemen, we'll see you. See later. Ya. Bye now. Bye-bye. <laughs>